Okay, here we are with Clara Jensen. She's gonna teach us how to make peanut butter fudge the way her family makes it. This is an old family recipe uh, that my mother used to make all the time and her mother used to make it. Now her mother uh, has been gone a lot of years, but I'm not sure if her mother, if my mother's grandmother made it and passed it down uh, because my mom was only about three years old when her grandmother passed away. But anyway, it's a family favorite. This is how you make it. You take two cups of sugar, make sure they're level. Then you take about an eighth of a cup of cocoa mix. That seems to make it smoother. And then you take one cup of, this is whole milk. And you dump that in a saucepan. And then you put it, uh, you stir it. Just mix it up really good. And then it goes onto the stove. I have found with different stoves, it takes different amounts of time for it to, to cook. It's supposed to cook to a soft ball stage. Uh, when I, if I had a gas stove, it cooks in about five minutes or so. But with my electric stove that I'm using now, it'll only go to about 212 degrees and a soft ball stage is 240. So I bake it, I cook it a little bit longer, but um, what I'm going to do today is put it on, I turn it on high, and once you put it on the stove, you don't, you don't stir it, you just leave it and watch it. And I'm going to cook it for about seven minutes, and I'll be timing, maybe, maybe I'm going to do it at six today to make sure that I don't burn it, because with this peanut butter fudge, it's pretty temperamental, and you just have to kind of learn how to make it as you watch it and make it on your stove. But I'll put it at six minutes on high and I'm going to stay by it and watch it and put the temperature in and keep checking it. Um, then when I made it as a young girl or watched my mother make it, she didn't have a food thermometer. She used just cold water and put a little bit of the ingredients in it to get it to a softball stage. So I'll kind of show you both ways today to make sure that we've got it right. So we'll go to that point. Put it on the stove. And I'll just leave it there and let it cook for six minutes and then we'll check it. It's been going for four minutes, and this is saying it's 213. And we're trying to get to 240. 240 is the softball stage. Okay. So that's pretty close. And what you have to do is you have to keep checking because it'll, it'll turn fast. Okay, it's been almost six minutes. And so I'm gonna start checking with the softball stage. Now I can put that in there and it all just goes into the water. But when I lift up my spoon, I can tell that it's coated on the spoon. So it's starting to turn a little bit. So at this point, I'm just going to keep checking with clean water for 30 seconds to a minute. And I can see that it's starting to stick a little bit to my spoon. So you're just getting clean water in between just every check in there. Clean water in between, and I'm watching when it when it clings to my spoon. If that's getting close. I 
and I'm scooping it right out of the middle of the pan to test it. What does your thermometer say it is right now? The thermometer is still 215. 214 to 215 right there. Mm -hmm. But I don't know for sure if it'll get hotter on my thermometer. Okay, if you want to come in a little bit closer, you can see how this is... Can you tell how that's sticking to my spoon? Try it one more time here. You can clean my water so that it's clear. It's See if you can see a little bit clearer here. This is close. See, it makes it all cloudy, so it's hard to tell. Okay. Check it with the thermometer one more time. See if it's gone any higher. Two eighteen, two nineteen, two twenty. Okay, I need two forty, but I don't think I'll get that on my thermometer. So what I'm going to do is so that I don't burn it is I'm going to take it and stick it in this cold water that I put into the sink, just enough to come up a couple of inches, three inches maybe on the bottom of the pan, and that will cool the fudge. I'm going to leave it there for at least five minutes and I'm going to come back and check it and when I can touch the pan and it's not real hot. It doesn't have to be cold but just not real hot. When it's cooled the pan down then I'll stir in the peanut butter and that'll be our next step. Okay now our fudge has been in the cold water. We're going to move it back over to the table and we're going to put in peanut butter. Um, you can do the crunchy you can do the creamy, whatever you'd like. I, I showed this and shared it in Relief Society one day, and the, one of the women said to me later, how did you get those little peanuts all in your fudge? It's the crunchy. So if you like peanuts, use crunchy peanut butter. This little jar is one pound, 16 ounces exactly, and I usually use the whole bottle. Now, if I start mixing it and it's soft and doesn't want to set up for me, add a little bit more peanut butter. Uh, my mother even used to take powdered sugar and stir it in to, to try to set it up. But I always told the kids, if it doesn't set up, it tastes real good on a spoon too. So we'll see how this turns out. It can be a little bit temperamental, so don't get discouraged if you're trying to make it. So I'll scoop all this peanut butter in and then I like to use, it doesn't have to be a wooden spoon, but one with a bigger handle because you have to beat the fudge to get the peanut butter all mixed in and to get it to set up. So I clean this out where you might have a sandwich left if you're lucky. that out and then you start beating it. I'm gonna bring that around here. Yeah, let's get a closer look at what you're up to there. Now you can see that it's thin, the fudge is thin, and that's okay. But you mix in the peanut butter and then as you keep be beating it, it gets a little bit thicker. Now if I beat it when it's too warm, and I haven't cooled it enough, it'll go straight to sugar. And it'll just set up and, and be sugar, sugary, way too sugary. So you have to make sure in between that you, you cook it and don't stir it, and then you don't 
um, beat it when it's too hot. It has to be cool. And you can see how that's getting thicker. And you have to be a little bit careful with it. This is why you learn how to make it as you do it because this is getting close to getting set up and sometimes it'll set up in the pan and you don't get it into the bowl in enough time. So I think that that's beat enough. It's still soft, but I'm gonna pour that into the dish that I have here and I've sprayed the dish so it'll come out a little bit easier with just some olive oil spray. And one of the funnest things about the peanut butter fudge is cleaning out the pan. That's always a favorite of the kids. So you don't have to get it completely out because they like to get a spoon. Now I can tell that that's setting up and so you have to get it in there enough to, in enough time. You let that set. Sometimes it takes just a couple of minutes. Sometimes it'll take five or 10. And this looks like it's, we cooked it just about the right amount of time, which was probably eight minutes, I'm thinking, on, the, on an electric stove. And you can see how that's starting to set up already. It's a little bit wet looking right there, but other than that, it's, it's starting to set up good. And so you can just leave that till you uh, feel like it's set up. And then just take a sharp knife and cut down through it to score it. I like to do this before it's set up too much because then you can get your knife through it without crumbling it if it, if it sets up too hard. Um, I like to cut it in small pieces because when you eat this, it's very rich. And so you can always come back and get another, another piece. But if it's too rich, then you won't be able to eat the piece that you've got. So there's the peanut butter fudge and um, we'll clean out the pan and enjoy that.